If you were following me on Facebook a few years ago, there was a period of five or six weeks when I was posting daily comments from people who had just left Islam. I would skim through all of my YouTube comments every morning and take screenshots of the ones that said, Hey, I just left Islam after watching your videos. Just by going through my YouTube comments, I was able to post anywhere from one to three messages a day from new ex-Muslims. I couldn't keep that up very long because going through all of my YouTube comments was pretty time-consuming. It would be impossible now because I'm getting way more views. So, I don't see most of my YouTube comments now, but I still see lots of comments from ex-Muslims. One of the things I find really interesting is when someone leaves Islam almost instantly. That's rare. If you've been trained all your life to believe that Muhammad is the greatest man who ever lived and that the Quran is filled with amazing scientific knowledge, it usually takes a while to undo the indoctrination. But every once in a while, you see someone who leaves Islam in 15 minutes or less. I was speaking just outside of Baltimore a few years ago. This was when Nabil was vlogging about his battle with cancer. A woman came up to me and asked if I could give a book to Nabil. Then she told me I should meet her husband, who was a former Muslim. So her husband came over. They were an African-American couple. He still had an Islamic beard. And they told me that she spent years trying to show him that Islam is false and that Christianity is true. She would watch Nabil's videos and my videos, and then she would go share what she learned with her husband. He eventually left Islam and became a Christian. Now, before some of you young Christian ladies get any brilliant ideas about marrying a Muslim and converting him, I have to point out that this is one of the only times I've ever seen this situation work out well. Well over 99% of the stories I've heard about a Christian woman marrying a Muslim man ended in disaster. But this one had a happy ending. The man became a Christian. Then he said to her, I have to tell my brother about this. He and his brother had been raised by parents who had converted to Islam back in the 1960s when it was somewhat popular in the African-American community to convert to Islam. What was the message that Muslim preachers preached to convince African Americans to convert to Islam? As always, Islam was adapted for a specific audience. Christianity is the white man's religion. Christianity enslaved the black man. Islam liberates the black man. Muhammad abolished slavery. Convert to Islam and stick it to whitey. Lots of African Americans converted. Unfortunately, most Muslim sources hadn't been translated into English, so there was no way for people to know if that message was correct. Fast forward to today, when we have open access to Islam's most trusted sources. The young ex-Muslim I met in that church near Baltimore told his wife, I have to tell my brother about this. His wife replied, whatever you do, don't send him any David Wood videos. You're just going to make him mad. He said, no, nah, I have to. So he sent his brother a link to my video, Muhammad, the white prophet with black slaves. If you haven't seen it, the video is about Muhammad's companions bragging that he was the whitest prophet in history and about Muhammad buying, owning, selling, and trading black African slaves and about Muhammad saying that Satan looks like a black man and about the Sharia ruling that anyone who calls Muhammad black is to be executed. You know, all the stuff Muslim preachers didn't bother to tell African Americans when they were trying to convince them to convert to Islam. So that's the video the man sent to his brother. His brother called him that night and said, I'm out of Islam. How did that happen so quickly? Again, this is rare, but it happens. Here's a comment from a recent video in which I was blasting away at Muhammad for being one of the sickest, most depraved men in history. I was a Muslim 15 minutes ago, but now I ain't. Why do some people leave Islam instantly while others take months or years? 
The key feature of someone who leaves Islam quickly seems to be that he has one main reason for believing in Islam, but he's never been given any solid evidence for that reason, so that once this one main reason is smashed to pieces with source after source after source right in front of his face, there's nothing else keeping him in Islam. So when a Muslim is raised to believe that Islam is the religion for the black man and that Muhammad abolished slavery, He's never been given any actual evidence for these claims because there is none. If you come along all of a sudden, giving him source after source after source, showing him that Muhammad was white and that he bought, owned, sold, and traded black African slaves and that his followers institutionalized black African slavery a thousand years before the United States even existed, you've just shattered his case for Islam. And when a Muslim is going through this, you can see the impact that the sources are having on him. You give the first source, and he dismisses it. Maybe it's out of context. Then you give another, and it's, well, I'll have to ask my imam about this. Then you give another, and another, and another, until he can't deny what he's seeing. Then it suddenly dawns on him. My leaders told me one thing about Islam but they never actually gave me any sources. This man is giving me sources, and my prophet, and my book, and my God are saying the exact opposite of what my leaders told me all my life. This means that my leaders are liars, but I based my faith in Islam on what they told me, and they're liars. I'm done with this religion. Or someone is told all his life, that Muhammad was the greatest man who ever lived. But what evidence was he given for this claim? None. He just heard it a bunch of times. <laughs> then you show up and prove from his most trusted sources that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl and that he took the ex-wife of his own adopted son after causing the divorce by lusting after her and that he had nine wives at one time, even though the Quran only allows four, and that he would have sex with all nine of his wives in one night, but only take one bath, and that he got caught having sex with his slave girl, and that he beat his wives, and that he encouraged his followers to beat their wives, and that he allowed his followers to hire prostitutes, and that he allowed his followers to rape their female captives, and that he was a caravan robber, and that he ordered his followers to kill people for criticizing him, and that he beheaded hundreds of Jews, and that he tortured people for money, and that he originally thought he was demon-possessed, and that he tried repeatedly to commit suicide, and that he admittedly delivered revelations from the devil, and that he admittedly was a victim of a magic spell that gave him delusional thoughts and false beliefs, and that he was constantly covered in semen, and that he sucked on little boys' tongues. And suddenly, that Muslim gets a panicked look on his face as he, too, realizes that his leaders lied to him all his life. He thinks for a while, then says, I was a Muslim 15 minutes ago but now I ain't. Again, this is rare. If you have a Muslim friend and you want to show him that Muhammad was a false prophet, you should be thinking long term, months or years. But if you ever notice that your Muslim friend only has one particular reason for believing in Islam, and you see that he has no real evidence for his belief, you might want to start stockpiling sources. Quran quotes, hadith passages. And once you've built an arsenal against that one particular reason, sit down with your friend and say, can I have just 15 minutes of your time 